your town, Alabama's message is to inspire and educate. I hope that maybe you'll be inspired and maybe you'll be a little, little educated as we, as we move through this. So I'm not going to really discuss traditional economic development in a sense. I'm going to, I would say that economic development is changing and it's much more transformational than it is transactional. So I want to discuss some relationships and some ideas that I have. Now I've had the opportunity and been blessed to uh, lead several teams. I was the mayor of the city of Prattville uh, for 12 years and I led 400 employees and we had a $40 million budget there, had a great team of employees and was blessed to have a lot of success with economic development and quality of life type projects. And I would, I would tell you that in my opinion, get economic development. You can't have one without the other in my opinion. And then I served as director of ADECA for seven years. And there we had a, have a, about 175 budget. Uh, I mean, 175 employees. We had about $300,000 uh, in our annual budget and oversaw about $650 million annually. So I uh, was blessed to lead two teams. Oftentimes when people, uh, uh, you know, hear about, when you're the mayor of a city, they always want to know what your best days were. And I would tell you that some of my best days was uh, purchasing property uh, that sometimes you get punched, elected officials get punched for doing things. But we purchased property where now James Hardy is sitting and they've got about 250 employees. We purchased land where the city of Prattville is now building a new softball complex. And we had a tremendous amount of retail growth which uh, left our city on solid financial, financial footing. Um, and then, <clears throat> you know, the best days, we had a EF3 tornado in uh, February of 2008. That was a best day and a worst day. Of course, there was a lot of property destruction, but it was the day when our city family and our community shone. The worst day during my time was actually coming up 20 years ago in a couple of uh, weeks, August the 17th, we had an 11 year old child uh, girl, Shannon Paul come up missing and was subsequently found murdered. And uh, that uh, uh, crime is still unsolved. Uh, but that was a that was just the absolute worst day of, of my time in office. Um, there were a lot of good days and like you a lot of a lot of bad days, a lot of challenging days. This slide shows Congressman Hal Rogers. He serves the 5th District of Kentucky and has served there since 1981. So he's had many consecutive terms, 20 consecutive terms. He was chair of the House Appropriations Committee from 2011 to 2016 and a strong defender of the Appalachian Regional Commission. And as, and as you can see, it says, an idea without funding is merely a mirage. Now, my friend Connie Bam Bainbridge says money always follows good ideas. Connie served as our economic development director here in the city of Prattville and now serves as the economic development director for Central Alabama Electric uh, Co-op, a co-op that serves 10 counties in Central Alabama. And I think if you put both of those together, if you, if you have an idea but no money, it is merely a mirage, but uh, money always follows good projects, good ideas. I would say that planning is a must, and I saw on the uh, on the list that there are several planners that are that are joining us today. Right now, there is so there's just an infinite amount of dollars coming down, and plans are a must. I am a believer that quick spending often causes wasteful spending, so I think it's important to plan where you're going to spend your dollars. And there are as you all know, with ARPA funds and with the infrastructure bill that passed the Senate just yesterday, there, there are going to be a lot of federal dollars coming to our state, and then they're going to be coming down to locals. And so I think planning is an absolute must. All types of studies that uh, I think a community should do to uh, be successful. Corridor studies, retail studies, you can see these hospitality, airport planning, broadband feasibility studies. Broadband feasibility studies are, are relatively new, but there are companies that uh, do uh, feasibility studies in local areas and they can tell the local government where they have gaps in broadband or where they have uh, abundance of broadband. 
as everyone on this call knows, if you're anywhere, mostly in rural parts of Alabama, Alabama's black belt broadband uh, is, at, is an absolute need. Comprehensive master plans, strategic plans, land use planning, industrial park master planning, recreation, recreational tourism, very big right now, pedestrian plan, bicycle trail goes right into recreational master plans, river trails, um, ADA compliance. Many communities do not have an ADA compliance plan, and uh, that is important to have. It doesn't mean that you need to fix everything that um, is not compliant, but it means that you have a plan so that if you're repaving the street, you, you move forward with your AD, ADA plan, of course, pavement management plan. And I'm sure there are other plans. These are just some that came to the, came to the top of my head. It's important, very important to have plans when, you, uh, when you're spending dollars. As the government folks that are, that are listening or watching know, you cannot just, uh, you won't just get money. You will actually, uh, you know, you will actually, you have to have a plan and, and then um, that money follows. So it's important also to leverage funding. There's federal funding and state funding and local dollars. And uh, when I was mayor of, of Prattville and went to talk to uh, Robert Bentley when he was, uh, had been, been elected governor, he said that he wanted a mayor to lead a DECA because of all the folks he thought a mayor would know how to leverage state and federal dollars and make them go a long way. And I think that's a profound statement uh, because you have to leverage funding and actually you leverage your folks in your community too. It takes all, uh, takes everyone pulling in the same direction for, for success. So I wanna mention a project um, that I think really leverages uh, funding, leverages some teamwork. It's a really interesting project over in Marengo County. This is the uh, picture at the very top with the trees growing through that gymnasium is the Marengo County High School. It was built in the 1950s and closed in the 1970s. And uh, in 2012, uh, the mayor and the folks in Marengo County came and they said, we, you know, we're in the middle of a food desert. The folks in Thomaston have to drive to Selma, Linden, or Demopolis to, uh, for groceries. We have this eyesore in the middle of our small town. And I want you to think about Thomaston. If you've never been there, it's a small, uh, you know, very small town, rural black belt community. Um, and they needed the sales tax dollars, they had an eyesore, and they needed, they needed the amenity for their folks to be able to shop. And so with the help of the USDA, the Delta Regional Authority, and other funding sources, uh, they were able to lure a grocery store from Valley Grand, Dave's, Dave's Market from Valley Grand, to come over and open a store in their, in their hometown. And they did so many uh, positives with opening this store. They saved a, a historic structure. Uh, they provided some sales tax dollars as well as the amenity of shopping for healthy uh, and having healthy food choices choices close to home. It was interesting at the <clears throat> at the grand opening of this store. You can see on the picture that's on the right. That's a basketball goal. So this store has basketball goals on either end. It has the scoreboard in the middle. It is. Uh, painted in the same colors of the Marengo County High School. It was interesting at the grand opening there to have folks talk about that they had gone to high school prom there, or they played basketball or watched basketball, had pep rallies. So there was a real sense of community pride when this store opened. Now, the history of this store, it, is, it, it was sold and since closed. However, it is being, uh, it is being regenerated right now with a, with a new owner, and uh, the mayor hopes to have the store open uh, by the end of this year. It is a tremendous asset, not only to Thomaston and Marengo County, but to those, those folks around. It, um, you know, it's a million dollar investment, 17 employees, plus the sales tax uh, when the store opened. But it is a tremendous, tremendous, um, uh, example of taking a historic structure, taking a structure that you think has no hope, and with the proper leadership and partnership,
having an economic development project that means an awfully lot to a, a small rural um, community that's not on the interstate <clears throat> and that's not on a major U.S. highway, but the need is still there. So the Thomasville grocery store, if you ever if you ever find yourself in that area, I would encourage you to go in that grocery store. It's a very unique unique spot, and it it just is a tremendous example of sense of place. It it just touches all manner of passions about to folks who who enjoy sense of place, um, local shopping, uh, saving a historic structure. It, it is. It, it really is a, a great example, great rural example of economic development in our small communities. Now, this this uh, you know, it, it, it's not Publix, but uh, they're not going to have a Publix in Thomas, and you have to manage your expectations. You have to manage those political egos, and uh, they had a leader that did that at the time and brought the partnerships in. So there's federal, state, and local dollars and leadership uh, in, this, in this grocery store. So relationships matter. You know, Al Pacino in The Godfather famously said, it's not personal, Sonny, it's business. I would say um, it's not business, it's absolutely personal. Relationships matter. And I always give the story of Fred McCollum. Uh, folks may know Fred McCollum was president of AT&T Alabama. And uh, when I was at ADECA, that's a picture of my phone, Fred came in, was meeting with me in my office, and <clears throat> my phone was sitting on the desk, and he said, Jim, who's your phone service with? <clears throat> and I said, well, Fred, uh, you know, I guess Verizon or somebody, I don't know, it wasn't AT&T, I do know that. And he said, well, has the president of Verizon ever asked you to be a customer? And I said, no. He said, has the president of Verizon ever asked for your business? And I said, no, not that I know of. And he said, well, I'm the president of AT&T in Alabama, and I would, I would like to have your business. And the next time our phone service came up, um, I, I, we have AT&T, and to this day, we still have AT&T because the then president, Wayne Hutchins is now president, but the then president of AT&T asked for our business. So it's, it's not it's not business, it's personal. And I would encourage you to get to know folks before you need them, whether you're an economic development official, um, a, a, you know, whether you're a, a mayor, a local official, whether you're with the Chamber of Commerce, whatever your role in your community is. Uh, as a team, uh, I'm not saying go rogue, but as a team, I would encourage you to get to know folks that can be helpful to you. You want to know these folks before you need them. So uh, some folks that I would encourage you to get to know is the, the people at the Alabama Department of Commerce. Um, recently, the Economic Development Association of Alabama held their summer conference in, in, um, in, uh, at the Grand. And one of the communities that I'm blessed to work with, a, a rural Black Belt community, had some officials go, and we were able to host um, uh, the Department of Commerce, specifically our, um, the person who works with, our, with this county, um, the economic developer from the Department of Commerce, for a breakfast. And it was very personal so that uh, she could meet our county commission chairman, so she could meet our volunteer leadership so she could meet some of the mayors in our area, but it's important to get to know people before you need them. You always want to, I believe, get to know them and have a connection with them. It, it truly is per, uh, personal. You know, get to know the folks at ADECA. If you don't know Greg Canfield at Commerce or Kenneth Boswell at ADECA, I would encourage you to get to know them and know their staffs. These people can be very helpful. Um, the folks at ADEM, um, USDA. Right now, we do not have, a, we have an interim USDA Rural Development Director, Alan Bowen. Alan Bowen is a longtime USDA employee, but these folks, oftentimes Commerce, ADECA, ADM, USDA, all partner together. EDA, the Economic Development Administration, uh, Michael Mills is our EDA rep for Alabama, and uh, Michael is, is just an absolute, uh, he's just a great person to know in the government. He will go out of his way to help any individual or locality, and it's important to know Michael. Um, all of the utilities that serve your, your particular area, you know, Alabama Power Company, Spire, Southeast Gas, others, TVA, 
all of the electric cooperatives. It's important to know these representatives because anytime there's a, a community or economic development project, oftentimes for it to be successful, you need folks from Commerce and ADECA and ADEM and USDA, EDA, the utilities, and of course our state legislators. It's important that you have a good relationship with your state legislators so that should you need them, uh, you can call them, and it's not when you when the house is on fire, so to speak. You can you can call them and 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 you know have have a good rapport with them. I think it's vitally important. And then of course there's uh, the alphabet soup of of uh, federal and state agencies. Uh, these are important to know. The Appalachian Regional Commission. If you're in a community, serve in a community from basically Montgomery to the north. Uh, the ARC is a state and federal economic and community development partnership that uh, works with uh, 13 states that make up the Appalachian uh, mountain chain. So basically from Elmore, uh, uh, Tallapoosa, Chilton uh, uh, County North, those 37 counties are in the Appalachian Regional Commission and uh, they are eligible to receive ARC dollars for uh, projects that uh, work in those communities. Those can be, again, economic and community development uh, related projects. The ARC dollars run through ADECA. I, again, get to know uh, the folks at ADECA that handle ARC. AR, ARC dollars are spread about our state in those, in those 37 counties. And it can be found in projects of all type, education, recreation, and economic development. The Delta Regional Authority, DRA, is another one of those alphabet soup projects that it's important uh, for folks to know. The Delta Regional Authority has, uh, or Alabama has 20 counties in the Delta Regional Authority's footprint, basically Black Belt counties um, that are south, uh, well, actually, I would say uh, uh, west and, and south of Montgomery County, if, you, if you're looking down at our state. So most of the Black Belt counties, and then it uh, circles around over to Bullock and Barber uh, and Russell, Russell counties over that way, over, over in the eastern, eastern part of our state. But the Delta Regional Authority, another federal partner, federal state partnership that comprises eight states that border the Mississippi River and Alabama's Black Belt. And federal dollars come to our state, again, through ADECA, and they can be used for um, economic development, community development, recreation type projects. Um, oftentimes, the capital stack for larger projects include ARC or DRA dollars along with other, other development dollars. So a great uh, DRA project that um, um, got a lot of headlines was down in, in Wilcox uh, County. The Golden Dragon, it's, it's a Chinese copper uh, tubing plant just outside of Thomasville. And uh, there were DA, DRA dollars as well as CDBG and other EDA type dollars that are, that are included. CDBG, Community Development Block Grants, uh, run through ADECA. Those are through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. Planning dollars are available. There are all manner of dollars. Uh, Shabir Olia at ADECA runs the CDBG program. Uh, TAP, uh, Transportation uh, Improvement uh, Program through the Alabama Department of Transportation. RLF, Revolving Loan Funds. Um, many agencies, a lot of our co-ops have our revolving loan funds. Our regional planning uh, agencies, the 12 regional planning directors uh, often have revolving loan funds. Uh, Land and Water Conservation, LWCF, those are funds for recreation. And right now, recreation tourism is, is tremendously important. Um, it's, it's economic uh, recreation tourism is tremendously important. RTP, recreational trails programming. Um, often you can stack an LWCF dollars and RTP dollars uh, together to form a project, whether it be a recreation uh, trail, a trailhead, um, any number of projects. And, and that tourism dollar, those tourism dollars that come into communities often uh, begin or have an LWCF or an RT, RTP component with them. And, and sometimes you have to think outside the box. One thing your town Alabama stresses and Matt Level says, think big, think bold. Uh, you have to sometimes think big and you have to think bold. Uh, I'll mention Heflin. 
you know, Heflin, I'm going to talk about a, an eco, a pure economic development project in a, in a moment from, from Heflin, but I have to <clears throat> I mention Heflin and, and Elba. Those are two communities that I like to discuss when I'm talking about your town, Alabama, because your town, Alabama, uh, Elba and Heflin have, have been very supportive of your town, Alabama, Main Street, Alabama, ACE, the Alabama Communities of Excellence Program and Design Alabama. So Heflin is close to the Penhody Trail up in Cleburne County. And, <clears throat> excuse me, they're, I think about a mile, a mile and a half off the trail. If someone from Heflin is listening, they can, they, they will, I was gonna say they can correct me, but they will certainly correct me. But they were a mile or a mile and a half off of the Penhody Trail. And they wanted to figure out how to get folks who were along the Penhody Trail into their downtown area. And they discovered that uh, basically the trail was close to one of their large city parks and their water source, a lake. And they basically connected that mile uh, with an unimproved type trail. And then they started uh, on Instagram and other social media, they started posting that if the hikers would come off the Pinote Trail and come to downtown Heflin, they would get their picture made with the mayor. And they would get a, a sticker that said they were hiking the Penhody Trail and they'd been in Heflin. And they had a trailhead sign made that's, po that's uh, hanging outside of the Heflin City Hall. And all of a sudden, for a small amount of dollars, they were getting tourists off the Penhody Trail that were spending the night in Heflin and that were eating, eating dinner in Heflin. And, and eating breakfast in Heflin and buying supplies in Heflin. <clears throat> and that is thinking bold and thinking big and thinking outside of the box because they were able to take an amenity that was close to them and they actually brought it to their city hall and they made those hikers feel welcome. And you can still go to the Heflin Instagram page and see hikers from all over, all over the country who have stopped at City Hall and spent the night just because of the hospitality and the ability to come to City Hall. And they got a, they got a, a patch or a sticker and, and they got their photo made with the mayor. So I'd encourage you to, to if you don't know, and there are certainly a, a, a lot of other <laughs> alphabet acronyms out there that you might want to familiarize yourself with, but these are some that I think are vitally important. OZ, the Opportunity Zone, Opportunity Alabama, Alex Flashbart and his group, they do a tremendous job of promoting um, rural Alabama and the Opportunity Zones across our state. Oftentimes, projects, economic development projects are um, interested in being in an opportunity zone. And every county in Alabama has an opportunity zone. If you're not familiar with your opportunity zone, I encourage you to talk to your economic developer. And I wanna make sure to highlight, <clears throat> excuse me, the partnering communities. Uh, Main Street, Alabama. Main Street um, is, is uh, you know, just a, a resource and again, I have to talk about Heflin and Elba. They are both Main Street communities, one in the northern part of our state, one in the southern part of our state, similarly situated, but very different. Heflin is on an interstate, Elba is not on an interstate. However, they are both strong Main Street supporters. Uh, they are design designated communities. You know, Main Street's focus is revitalizing downtowns and neighborhoods and their 28 designated communities and they focus on jobs, dollars, and people. And um, I'm proud to serve on the Main Street Alabama board. Uh, next week, actually, beginning Wednesday the 18th, is Main Street's annual conference, and this year it's taking place in Gadsden. And I would encourage you to uh, reach out or to go to the Main Street website and to, and to uh, uh, if you have an interest, to go to the website and maybe look up Main Street, attend some of the, some of the programs. Uh, there are so many positive things happening in communities, small and large. And we do have small communities that are in Main Street, smaller communities, but also uh, places like Huntsville and Birmingham have Main Street areas in them. Um, it, it is so important. It's history and it's, and it's making money in areas, you know, one of our Main Street communities that has gotten so much press over the over the last few months is Wetumpka, and uh, with the HGTV and their appearance in the hometown takeover. But they're a vibrant, 
vibrant Main Street community and were a vibrant Main Street community long before HGTV, HD, HGTV came their way. Of course, Your Town Alabama is an asset-based uh, organization that hosts a three-day workshop. If there are folks that are watching uh, or listening today, I hope, and, and you haven't been, you're not a graduate of Your Town Alabama, I hope you will consider uh, thinking about joining us for our workshop next year, usually in the spring. I was uh, uh, mayor of Prattville in 1999, and this, uh, uh, several folks came to see me, and they thought I would be, uh, I would enjoy your town, and it would be helpful for our community. So um, I attended your town, and then ensured that our city staff went to your town, our city planner, and others. And then uh, I like the idea of having locally owned business, kind of Main Street business owners attend your town. So every year the city sent two or three Main Street business owners to your town, not folks who were interested in design by necessity, not folks who uh, it, it, it might not have been their passion. They may have been a person who cut hair on Main Street or might have been a re restaurateur, someone who had a business and who was invested in our downtown area. I wanted them to go to Main Street. Uh, excuse me, to go to your town, because I thought it was important for them to be able, when they were talking to their customers, to have a, an appreciation for asset-based design, to have an appreciation for what we were doing at the city level, and to be able to discuss and to be proud of their area. I would encourage uh, everyone listening to, uh, uh, you know, if you've been to your town, to talk to your local officials about making sure that every every time there, every year, that you have some folks, or some representatives from your area. It can only it can only improve improve your area. Design Alabama is a citizen led nonprofit that emphasizes design across our state, and it uh, you know promotes the applied art education, designers, sound principle and design, uh, sustainability. Uh, Main uh, Design Alabama uh, has a mayor's summit every year. Uh, five mayors are invited to uh, come to the Mayor's Design Summit. It's a two and a half day charrette. Usually happens in Prattville. It's mayors only. Uh, there's no city staff that comes with their mayors. And what main, uh, what Design Alabama, what the Mayor's Summit does is exactly what your town does. It takes mayors and puts them together with designers, landscape architects, planners, professionals, folks that they may never come in contact with in their in their daily walk and it allows them to uh, to uh, share ideas to share a design issue and to try to come up with some consensus on something that can be done with a design issue in their in their hometown and of course ACE is the Alabama Communities of Excellence program that provides technical assistance to cities that range in size from 2,000 to 18,000 in population ACE um, you know, stresses assets, planning, and leadership, uh, economic development, quality of life. But I, I think of ACE as a, as a tremendous leadership program. And ACE is transitioning right now. Uh, there's some discussion between the Alabama League of Municipalities and the ACE Board of Directors about uh, a, a future partnership with ACE and the League uh, because basically they, say they serve the same uh, constituencies, ACE communities have to be, um, they have to be qualified and, and they have to be designated. And the league certainly has a long history of, of education and of helping our, our cities, across our municipalities across the state. So it just makes for a perfect fit for ACE and the League of Municipalities to uh, join forces. I would encourage you, you know, if, you know, if you're in an unincorporated area, if you're in a rural area, a large area, I would I would really encourage everyone listening to uh, you know familiarize yourself with ACE, Design Alabama, of course Your Town Alabama, and Main Street Alabama. These four organizations, uh, while they work, they have separate missions and they work in different areas. They certain their missions certainly overlap. All of the directors work well together. We hosted the Community Seeds program earlier this year in Montevallo, where we talked about sustainable design. It was a wonderful day. I say we because I'm blessed to serve on the board of, of all four of these organizations, Your Town, Main Street, Design, Alabama, and ACE. Uh, 
um, I, I would familiarize yourself with these. These are tremendous resources. Sometimes, you know, to get their services, there's a small charge. Oftentimes, they can pass along nuggets to you free of charge. And, and I would encourage you to, uh, to explore each of these, these four quality of life organizations. They, these, these groups are making a difference across our state. You can see the fingerprints of these organizations in, in uh, cities and towns large and small across our state. And finally, I want to talk about uh, this economic development project in Heflin. And uh, Tanya Maloney was the city's economic developer and Cleveland County's economic developer when this project was, uh, was coming in. She has uh, now recently joined the uh, staff of Main Street, Alabama and is out trekking across the state. But this is a historic, uh, again, a historic school in downtown Heflin, just a few blocks off of their Main Street. Uh, it was the high school from 1936 to 1984. Um, it sat empty, and many of you, we have all seen these, this type of structure and this type of, of school in our communities. In fact, uh, where I live in Prattville, there's two that are basically this same style within, within a stone's throw of our, of our home in, in the Daniel Pratt Historic District. But we've all seen these. Some of these have uh, closed and become in disrepair. Some are still in operation. This school had closed and had, had become an antique flea market at once and then closed again and had various other things. But it was, it was a closed kind of eyesore building that is right across the street or up the hill from, their, uh, from Heflin's Senior Center and right off of their downtown area. It's a $12 million capital investment that uh, has now 42 residences plus a matching building that uh, houses 16 memory care patients, 35 jobs. This was the first project in the state of Alabama several years ago to include um, Opportunity Zone, New Market Tax Credits and Historic Tax Credits. I believe Tanya, if she, I don't know if she's listening, but she'd be screaming it's the first in the nation that utilized all of these, the, the Opportunity Zone, New Market Tax, Historic Tax Credits. Um, it's a tremendous, tremendous, um, you know, facility. If you ever have the opportunity to be in Cleburne County and be in Heflin, this is such a cool spot to go to. As you can see, they have the uh, grad, uh, pictures of the graduating classes and they have, um, it's just bright and sunny. Um, they used uh, their local businesses in the restoration. It is, it is just, again, it's very similar to the Thomaston grocery store project. It's an economic de development project that's in a small rural, rural community, a lot of community pride, a tremendous amount of community pride. This, um, uh, the back of this building is on a hillside overlooking the old high school football stadium. They still have all, all manner, they don't have football there, but they have all manner of community events. So the residents can be out on the back of this facility and just overlook that football stadium. It, it, a tremendous amount of community of community pride in 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 Heflin and in Cleburne County with this project. Again, as Matthew, as Matt Lavelle says, think big, think bold. This is a project that someone, many people probably drove past, walked around, and said, "This will never happen. This is, you know, it's boarded up, it's old, it's dilapidated." And someone, a leader and a team, decided this is. You know, let's be big, let's be bold, let's make something happen. And here we are three years later and they have a tremendous residence uh, a need, needed residence for senior adults in their community. It is, it is a very, very um, fun building to wander around. Hardwood floors still has the auditorium uh, where, that, where folks can eat and has a library with all the yearbooks. It, it's just a, it really uh, checks a lot of boxes, community pride, uh, sense of place, didn't tear down a historic structure, a cool project all around. You know, Van, Vanzetta Penn McPherson is a lady in Montgomery, retired federal judge, and she had a quote that I really like, new does not necessarily mean better and change does not necessarily mean improvement, but unproductive sameness almost always expedites decline. And Lord knows that some communities, it appears, just has unproductive sameness. And when you have unproductive sameness, you just, you know, just naturally have decline. 
So I think if you, if you, uh, you know, you think about communities across our state that folks are doing things, small communities, Greensboro in Hale County with welcoming new folks um, that often don't look or sound like uh, a native, but they're there and they're spending money and they wanna be there. And they've decided that they can, uh, they can provide for their families in, in Greensboro. Um, I think I, I think of, uh, of A.C. Reeves in Selma. She has a the Woolworth building in downtown Selma that has some wonderful lofts that are redone. And A.C. decided she was going to bring life to her building. So she has started focusing on an artist once a month. And she has the artist do a mural uh, on the window of the Woolworth building. And at at, at the beginning or the opening of that artist, of when the mural is done, she has a, a little reception and party inside. And it's a wonderful time for the community to come together to celebrate an artist. And it changes uh, 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 the, the street right in, right in front of City Hall, right across from City Hall. That is a local person that's making a difference. And, and it's, it's, you know, she's being productive and it's, it's awfully important. And then a quote, I'm, I'm, a, you know, I'm a believer in the value of relationships, if the right souls, you know, if you can get the right souls to the table, and I would add and keep the wrong souls out of the table or out of the room, any problem can be solved. We have so many spots across our state that really, really um, embody sense of place. And you think about I-65 from Athens to Mobile. And my hometown of Prattville is right along, right in the center of that, of that stretch of road. But you think of any of those interstate exits and you get off of that exit and you know, there's a Chick-fil-A or there's a Love's truck stop or there's a McDonald's, very, very same. But if you get off the interstate, farther into that community, there are assets. There are assets in every small town, every large town. And it is important that we in Alabama that we uh, know these assets, that we value these assets, that we save these assets, and that we celebrate these assets. And, and we have such an opportunity right now with dollars coming into our state. Um, again, economic and community development, in my opinion, go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a true believer in that. I do believe that if you get the right people to the table, anything can be solved. There is my contact information. Um, and, you know, if you have a question or a comment, concern, please feel free to call me, text me, or email me. Uh, I, my consulting firm, I do strategic, economic, and community development work across our state, and am blessed to do so. I get to move around, move around the state um, on a regular basis, which is just really cool to see. Uh, see tremendous projects happening in in towns all across all across our state. Uh, I would encourage you to, you know, y'all think big, think bold. Call me or anyone else if you have questions, comments, concerns. So we, we don't have any questions. Um in the chat right now, but if you if y'all have any, uh, throw them in there and we can get Jim to answer them for you. Uh, Jim, thanks so much for, for doing that. That was great. Uh, I do want to remind everybody that uh, the Your Town Alabama workshop uh, is going on, going to happen April 2022. Uh, it'll be um, the, the last week. So y'all uh, follow us on social media or check out the Your Town Alabama website. Uh, for more information about that and you can sign up on the year town website as well thank you all so much for for uh joining us today and thanks again jim thank you collier y'all have a great thanks. afternoon bye everybody